still on the horse. So it's it's a real problem if your horses get balls, but a lot of horses do at, in the springtime. Tony McAvoy looking for his first Group 1 winner from Lindsay Park with elegant fashion. A young trainer looking for his first Group 1 winner. He's got plenty of good mentors along the way. It's with Andrew Bensley. Yes, John, you've learned from the best through time, haven't you? You've uh, worked, I think, with Bart Cummings and also the Gay Waterhouse Stable. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And take us through today the emotions of getting your horse into your Group 1 shot of thunder. Mate, um, you know, look, I'm pretty relaxed. Uh, the horse is ready and I probably only get nervous when they're not ready, you know. You brought him down. You specifically missed the races in Sydney last weekend down for this race. Uh, you've just been happy with the way he's been prepared in Melbourne? Yeah, look, he's come on since uh, the Shannon and he'd need to improve to win today and I think he's done that. He ran third in this race to show a heart 12 months ago and probably in fairness you, you didn't probably take too much notice of him last year but he really has improved since that time most people believe. Yeah look he's probably racing a bit different you know he racing a bit further forward and he's giving himself a few opportunities you know. Good luck John. Best Quietly luck, confident? Let's hope so. Quietly confident Brendan. John O'Shea. Okay thanks for that Andrew. Uh, as I can tell you on track there's been one back and heavily back to win. It's shot of thunder. It's now an equal on course favourite uh, with Perno. So I I think if we use that as a barometer, what you've seen in the yard, Richard, it's a bit hard to argue with that. It all matches up. Perno hard to back because she's a plain little thing, but she did look healthy. Um, but I have to agree, shot of fun, it looked look outstanding in the yard. And look, there's many chances in this. These big handicaps can often produce a result. And that's Bush why. Padre? He's very well. He looked well uh, for him. He didn't get much luck at his last start. So with a bit of luck in running, you could see Bush Padre running on. How about the barrier with Bush Padre? That's the trick. I mean, it needs a good ride, but you've got a fair jockey on. Seems to know his way around. <laughs> and you're referring to Damien Oliver. Barrier number two it is. The first goes into line. Big field, great race. It's a Group 1 Turak handicap. It's been won by some of the stars of racing. Uh, we go back to Golden Sword one many years ago. Poetic King winning for the Freemans along with Marble Halls. Show a heart it was last year, the Queenslander. Will it be a Queenslander this year with Scenic Peak? Here's Greg Miles. Now Perno comes up. Here's Shot of Thunder. He placed here last year on an unsuitable wet track from a wide barrier. He's got his favoured dry surface today. He's got a better barrier draw. And he's been backed into equal favourite with Perno. Now Chairman's Choice moves up for Lonigan Millam. So we have about six of the or seven of them uh, locked away. Now Weasel Will coming up. He failed in this last year before going to the Valley and winning the Waterford Crystal. Gets back and makes ground strongly at the end of his races. Here's Pure Theatre. He'll be hoping for a trouble-free run. He seems to have found trouble in so many of his starts in Australia. It's Platonic. Goes up into her place now and Society Bow is moving in. Boy, what a day of racing we've experienced here. Maybe the changing of the guard in the previous race. Lonro looks such a prospect for the rest of the spring, doesn't he? Now, Scenic Peak coming up. Dan Nikolic placed in this race two of the past three years. La Bella Dama moves up with Royal Code and Tyrolene. They come up together. Tyrolene needs a win here to take her place in the Caulfield Cup next week. Set for the Group 1 Turak. Racing now. Pure Theatre didn't jump well. And one of the first out, Perno towards the inside. Shot of Thunder, Bush Padre away well. Umrum's going up quickly out wide, trying to sit on the speed with La Bella Dama driving through, and she goes to the front now. So La Bella Dama leads from Umrum in third placing, a length and a half away, Scenic Peak, and Perno getting a beautiful trail fourth. Weasel Will Handy at fifth the outside, but wide and Shot of Thunder a half length away. Wonderbush Padre, Chairman's Choice, a link Chattanooga on the outside of Prince Binbara. Two links further back is It's Platonic and they're followed by Society Bow travelling wide. Pure Theatre the rail and then Royal Code Elegant Fashion and Tyrolene from her outside gate dropped out last of all. Umrum's taken over the running out to the 800 metres and he leads by a length La Bella Dama, Scenic Peak and Perno the fence and then Weasel Will outside Shot of Thunder. Half a length away to Bush Padre, Chairman's Choice, Chattanooga and then Prince Benbara. He's worse than midfield the inside followed by Society Bow, It's Platonic and then Pure Theatre, Royal Code gate them about 10 before the turn he's taking off now and then elegant fashion and last of all is Tyrolene
to the turn and the dual winner of this race Umrum leads from Scenic Peak in behind them La Bella Dama Perno try to get away from the rails then Weasel Will Society Bow putting in a run down the outside and then Bush Padre as they got to the 200 Scenic Peak race to the lead Perno's getting a run through shot of thunder sees daylight he's coming hard and then Society Bow and Weasel Will it's uh, now Scenic Peak tackled by shot of thunder Umrum fighting back shot of thunder grabbing the lead Scenic Peak kicked Scenic Peak or oh, shot of thunder nothing in it there close for third also Perno Umrum and Chairman's Choice put in a big one wide out and they were followed by Bush Padre Society Bow Saddle looks to have moved on it the riders gone over like the last of the straightbacks then Weasel Will Pure Theatre it's Platonic Royal Code Chattanooga elegant fashion back towards the tail with La Bella Dama shot of thunder or scenic peak scenic peak has kicked shot of thunder the outside looks like he might get it wait for the judge shot of thunder's got the bob in the photo looks like it's his the judge to sever for it shot of thunder outside scenic peak what about the battle for third umrum's right up there with perno and chairman's choice judge still hasn't given his verdict there it is, 11's won it. Shot of Thunder. Glenn Boss. Shot of Thunder's got there. Improving on his third last year on a soft track. He's just arrived. 11 Shot of Thunder first. Eight Scenic Peak has run second. Danny Nikolic. So his string of placings in this Group 1 race continues. Placed three times in the last four years now. Young John O'Shea, who learned under the greats, Bart Cummings, and more recent times, Gay Waterhouse, collects his first Group 1 win after a very short time in the training ranks. He hails from far north Queensland, and they'll be cheering the rafters down in uh, far north Queensland. How is that for a finish, Richard Freeman? Uh, sensational finish, and look, he's been racing really well shot of thunder in Sydney. He's come down here, looked really well in the yard, and just continued on there. But you have to give Scenic Peak all accolades as well. A great effort. And what about old Umrah? He was right there till the last minute. And you can see out in the orange colours in the head-on here, that horse pig-rooting. Now, the, obviously the jockey's hit it, the horse doesn't like it, he might have flanked the horse and uh, thrown, him out of the, thrown him out of the saddle and he's lost his stirrup there. So uh, I think that was Society Bow, might have been. Yeah, that was with uh, Craig New at the saddle, so Craig will learn to, to keep them nice and high on the horse. Wow, what a day. Just action-packed, thrill a minute. Two trainers, uh, one uh, who's been around a lot longer, Leon Corston's winning his first Group 1, and young John O'Shea registering his first. A special day for him. The runner-up, Scenic Peak. Oh, he's always promised to deliver, and he came close there. And old Umrum, how about his run for third? Uh, great old horse, great old horse. It was, uh, I think, Society Bow who, who did the little high kick halfway down the straight, nearly unseated. I can tell you this horse, Richard, was bought for a substantial amount of money uh, by Glen Logan Park team as a future stallion and uh, transferred to the John O'Shea yard. And I know the Glen Logan team is here from Queensland and uh, they'll be thrilled with that performance. Uh, the cheer went up when uh, they crossed the line and that photo was announced. Well, as we wait to catch up with the winners here, they return. Larry Olsen, just briefly, your late mail. Yeah, Brendan, 2, 9, 11 and 3, 2 star tell, he's a short priced here, has shortened a little bit outside and uh, on the way he looks in the enclosure and where he's going to be throughout the race, I suppose he's deserving of his position there, so yes, I like him to win, he, he looks very good in the enclosure. 9, I'm putting Motivate in, this horse is another horse that'll race somewhere near him and uh, he looks extremely well, then we've got uh, 11, I'm putting him in Oland, comes in very well with the weight, young Brent Albuino, just got up in that last one with a little bit of luck, and then of course Bamp connection does look well also in the enclosure he's possibly one horse that has shortened a little bit outside as well bamp connection but uh, we'll go uh, we've got a little bit back on the last we'll go into this one two nine eleven and three thanks brendan andrew bensley's with john o'shea in far north queensland they'll be cheering andrew john o'shea's here with us as his horse returns great emotion first group one congratulations thanks andrew got to walk in with him mate yeah that'll be good, no? that'll be good. mate uh some, take us through the last hundred. Mate, I, I was just wrapped in a run, you know, he's bolting, mate, you know. And thanks, Faz. And, uh, you know, it's just whether he could run him down. I was lucky that we got a cart into the race and he stuck his neck out the end. Are we safe to walk in behind this horse yeah, or what, mate? Right. He's as long as you're not a grey pony. No, that's all right, I'm not a grey pony. <laughs> take us, uh, did you think you'd won? No, I thought I got beat. Yeah, Thank you, yeah. champion. I thought I got beat, mate, but oh, I'm happy to take it. I'll go and do some work, eh? North Queensland, what about it? Reckon they'd be rocking and rolling at the minute? I'm telling there's a few tabs in Mareeba and Cairns are a bit short of cash at the moment. Yeah, no, go Good in luck there, John. Okay. John O'Shea with uh, Glenn Boss. 
We'll just put the mic in here and see, uh, see if we can get anything. Just went back there just showing him the stick, you know. Right, mate. Good on you, mate. <laughs> There we go, a bit of emotion as they come back. Glenn Boss going off to the scales and John O'Shea. Well, he couldn't be happier, I don't think, Brendan. Yes, that's very true. That's a real fairy tale story. I had actually had the pleasure of uh, spending some time in studies at a younger age with John O'Shea. I never knew he had a racing bent, Richard. We were off studying to be journalists together, and here we are, him in the Group 1 Winner Circle, and I'm so both pleased and proud. Met his dad at the racetrack. Uh, he's absolutely thrilled, no doubt, in far north Queensland. I think you're getting a big vicarious thrill from John's success. I am. <laughs> I tell you what. ...horse here, scenic peak. So we're about to take a look at the head-on, Richard, as uh, we roll up on this. The black colours belong to Shot of Thunder. Scenic peak in the yellow and red colours. Red cap, uh, Umrun back on the fence. And Perno with a red cap and black sleeves. Well, Perno is right inside of scenic peak at the moment. You see scenic peak starts to come across towards the fence and crowds Perno on top of Amram who really copped the backwash of it. Uh, that's where the interference was. That'll be where the grounds are lodged and uh, look there'd be something in that. The margin's not great. Perno was uh, fourth across the line and fourth against second alleging interference in the home straight. But do you realise if uh, the protest is upheld Amram is then promoted to second place and Perno promoted to third if successful. Okay so fourth against second and Darren Beedman also looking at the video re uh, Amram which finished in third position. So perhaps we haven't heard the end of this year's Turak handicap. And we'll await no news through from the stewards' room on that. But that'll, uh, that'll be upheld. Now, the, the crowd on the race course are seeing the head-on for the first time. And the oohs and ahs are for the interference that occurred. So, um, look, there's a, every chance this will be upheld. If it is, depending on which one is upheld or both, Amram will finish in the second position. And Perno may or may not go to the third position, depending on which of the two protests is upheld. If both are upheld, um, Rum will go to second, Pernell will go to third. And scenic people go to fourth? To fourth. OK, let's head trackside to Rose Hill. Late mail time for race seven. Race seven here. Peters. And Lazaz is in and we're all set and ready to see them jump. Racing. Panorama near the inside, one of the best to break the line. Dudley Do-Ride jumped out nicely and so too did Fox Aveal. Shanty improving, followed by Stormbuster and Lazaz is going up quickly in company with Counter Force. As they settle down and travel 300 metres now, Dudley Do-Ride taken on by Lazaz. He's keen to lead Bowman and the favourite hits the front now. Around the first corner, Lazaz a length and a half on Shanty third. Dudley Do-Ride, Counter Force settles fourth. On the outside of Panorama, a length and a half to Stormbuster, two and a half Fox Abil. Innes looks as though he's in a bit of trouble on it, and on its inside is time signal. Two lengths, Gastellan, and a neck the fence is Lion Rock. Down the back they travel, and Lazaz shows the way at the 1200 by a little more than a length now. Shanty in second, Posse starting to pull. Third is Dudley Do Right, counter forces fourth, and then Panorama Stormbuster. A length and three quarters further back is time signal on the inside of Fox Abil. Lion Rock second last, and absolute is Gastellan as they work out of the back straight and come to the 900. And the John O'Shea trained Lazaz is the leader. Three quarters to a length clear on Shanty. One to Dudley, do right. A length further back is Counterforce, followed by Panorama. Stormbuster at its quarters. About two and a half then to time signal over on the inside of Fox Abiel. Lion Rock next to last, and Gastellan is last. Little change for quite a way. And at the 550, and Lazaz in front. Nothing's pressured the favourite. It's more than a length on Shanty. And then Dudley, do right, followed by Counterforce, and a length of Panorama trying to ease off the rails and Stormbuster on his outside Lazaz straightens up and snuck away and down to the 350 Lazaz by two shanty followed by Stormbuster counter forces next and then Dudley do right but Lazaz about two and a half lengths clear Stormbuster second Lion Rock from a mile back but Lazaz in front he's holding his rivals Stormbuster and Lion Rock for minors but this is a breeze for Lazaz Lazaz from Stormbuster and Lion Rock and then Panorama from Counter force time signal Gastel and Shanty and then Dudley do right and last to complete the course was Foxabile. Well, what a wonderful uh, 20 odd minutes for Johnny O'Shea. Winning the big one or one of the big ones in Melbourne with a shot of thunder and of course uh, coming out and taking this uh, second last race in Sydney. I'm sure he would have been uh, glued to the uh, on course television at Caulfield, winning the Turak handicap, which was on at 10 past four, and this one jumped at 4.30. Geez, a promising horse, Lazaz number six, no numbers up at the moment. Lazaz by Pompey Court from Epic Pulse, 
and uh, trained by John O'Shea for Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Maktoum and uh, has scored well. She, uh, another horse in the same colours, looked good during the week, Al Berg. And uh, Johnny O'Shea, his, his big weekend may not have finished because tomorrow he'll saddle up the favourite in the prestigious and very rich Canberra Cup in the shape of the informed Bedouin. Yep, and John just uh, sat with us, Richard. Uh, very cool and calm, uh, the boy from Mareeba in Far North uh, Queensland. I think that's a facade. I think he's pretty excited. That's yeah. his first Group 1 winner? First one for him? Yep, well, he'll be feeling pretty good about it, I can tell you. I uh, know, he gave up professional rugby league. He was a professional footballer in 1995. Yeah, there's, a, there's a good career move. Yeah. Gave up getting his head bashed in. To... <laughs> his body broke down. <laughs> well, he's gone all right as a horse trainer, and you can do that till you're 60 or 70 or 80. He was with Bart Cummings in the era, I think it was uh, St. Lee and Dane Ripper, so he got to have a bit to do with some smart horses. Now, Victoria Wybrun, very nice horse indeed, lovely mare, has only had the six starts, and she's been placed and won in five of them, and uh, didn't have the best of runs last start, and it was a real solid performance. Looks good. The five and the seven are the other two key ones in betting figures, uh, as the presentations dissipate here. Number two, Star Hit, being kept fairly safe in betting. Well, this had no luck last start. It was hemmed in on the fence, drew barrier one on that particular occasion, and did get interference. No, nah, I wouldn't dismiss it. OK, as they parade past our uh, umbrellas down here in our commentary position, and uh, of the other ones in the market, it's still hasty back, still the on-course favourite. Oregon Seal's a $42 chance at uh, longer odds. Yeah, Oregon Seal couldn't see it having any possible chance at all. Uh, I can certainly appreciate why it's those odds. Number five, haste your back. At least today, it has drawn a nice barrier. And Lady K, as you see on the screen there, this is a query runner. If the speed's OK, this will get home pretty well. I think Ronnie Quinton, typically, his horses look fantastic, trains well. And Hastie Back, as mentioned, is the favourite. And the other one in the market is number 14, Noble Glow. There's Hastie Back. A brief comment before we go to Victoria Park. Hastie Back looks absolutely fantastic. For a change, it's at least drawn favourably. Rolls off the fourth. Now, Caulfield due to go seven minutes from now. Late male picks are two, uh, should I say, in this race. To be confirmed, actually, Alf Matthews. Five ahead of seven, eight and 13. Five haste your back. Has had no luck in recent runs. You have to include it because it is a classy horse. I don't believe... It's uh, a juicy double figure odds. Money has come for Galapagos Girl in half a point. A very similar price on the tote. There's the old call. Lala's moved in. That completes it, so we're set to see action. Ready and racing. Lady K just jumped reasonably. Contrary Lady was out well, so was Gradual. Shattered Love began very fast. Shirley Slovena star hit got away well and haste her back next over on the inside. Shattered Love the leader after about 250. Limerick Lady drives through and heads her now. And then American Graffiti close up Noble Glow. And star hit holding about fifth placing on the rail. Then Shirley Slovena Gradual haste your back. Contrary Lady. Crimson Gem out wider followed by Galapagos Girl. A length and a half Miss Lala. Lady K's Got a fair way back from Woodwina past the skies and three to Oregon Seal. At the 500, Limerick Lady had it narrowly from Noble Glower outside. Star hit the rail. Shattered Love joining the leading bunch out wide with Shirley Slovena. Crimson Gemma's off the track. Miss Lala was wide. And then gradual as they cornered from Contrary Lady. Galapagos Girls getting into the clear. Lady K's trying to follow her home. Shirley Slovena raced to the lead though. And she's out by about two or three lengths passing the 200 metre mark. Haste her back past the skies. Trying to get there and then Galapagos Girl, but Shirley's Lavina in front of past the skies. Haste your back and Galapagos Girl. Shirley's Lavina in front and Shirley's Lavina by a long neck past the skies. Two to Haste your back third, then Galapagos Girl. Wood Wiener followed Contrary Lady, Lady K American Graffiti. Oregon Seal picked up a few and then Miss Lala followed by Star Hit. And back behind those were Lady K in that bunch. If I hadn't called her over the line, uh, Crimson Gem was trailed by Limerick Lady, and well back as Gradual Shattered Love and Noble Glow last of all. Shirley's Lavina takes out the last. Number 15, written by Reese McLeod for Pat Hyder, will pay 26.50 and 7.70. An outsider and a big Quinella coming up past the skies, $9.70 for the place. And Hasty Back will pay $1.90. So it'll be a big trifecta and a big Quinella exactor in the last on the card. Punters were on target right up until the final event.
Shirley Slovena winning at number 15 in a time of 110.32. 110.32. Shirley Slovena, who'd been racing in very good form until she stepped into a better class race last time out. Bouncing straight back to the winner's stool to, today at big odds. Past the skies, charging home for Stephen Baster. Would have got very close in a few more strides because Shirley Slovena was just starting to wilt a little on her finishing run. And haste you back in third place. Fourth over the line, number eight, Galapagos Girl. And fifth in was number 16, Woodwina, 110.32. Take dividends on. Uh, there was a little support about 10 minutes ago for Music Star. It's just eased on the last couple of minutes with money for its stablemate trail of gold. So the three best try to three Baghdad.